Alrighty, you probably hear a bit of a buzz. The battery died. Shit phone. It's an old phone from uh, 2010, actually. So it's a pretty old battery. Um, anyway, as for these plum trees, they just keep coming up. So I just keep putting wire guards around them to protect them from the sheep. Because I've got sheep walking around here. And uh, the long and short of it all... is that uh, they just keep banging plums out and like the bloody plums are astronomical I don't get my, that to most of them because I get sick to death of eating plums and most of them are cherry plums so they're not the bigger plums, they're the small ones but then I actually have had actually this room that I'm in, I built this onto the house uh, it was never originally here um, and it was the door to this room was just an open door to the outside and my uncle who previously had this house uh, this little cottage he um, well basically must have thrown some old plums out that he bought and I now have well one's recently died by being crushed by blasted box thorn and the sheep biting the blasted stems and everything um, now it's six plum trees that are the big plums I think they're the Japanese style, they're the big purple ones uh, and they're absolutely fantastic, they're miles different in taste from the little cherry plums but as for the cherry plums you just pick bags and bags and bags and bags and you give up you don't even want them all, you just let the birds get them all because there's so many of them you know but if you're going to live in a situation where you can't be walking around in public or whatever, hey guess what, you know dry them out, you can dehydrate them there's all these methods of preserving that hillbillies will know, you know there's ways of like they call it canning but they actually jar these things up cook up tons of the damn things and then jar them up uh, there's other one which is my favourite one is the dehydration where you dry them out and you put them in ziploc bags you know and you can eat them all later there's a huge amount of different tricks and bits and pieces uh, to do a lot of stuff where, you know, you, you mightn't have really given a crap, uh, but you'll give a crap now, you know. And the interesting thing is that I've noticed there's a certain way that, like, there's certain, there's, there's a couple of medicinal plants around here. Uh, one of them gets rid of any sort of warts and whatnot. Uh, and uh, you know that's a that's a common thing we call it milk thistle uh, I believe there's another name for it in the states um, I don't know what is it like straw thistle I did, I did know um, but anyway we've got this stuff and the long and short of it is that I found there was a trick that I used to be able to find out what stuff was. Now, you hear these names, and sometimes you'll find out they're actually the wrong name. So, there's a particular plant here called marshmallow, and my uncle used to claim he could eat it. And he'd eat the damn leaves and everything. Um, the reality is it's not actually marshmallow. But what I found out was kettle overflowing. What I found out was you can type in the name of what they've told you this plant is and type it into Google Images. Then go through Google Images and you'll see what the plant is click on it load the web page and see if indeed it is the plant that they've called it then it should tell you the botanical name if not click on another photo of the same thing and it'll tell you the botanical name once you've got the botanical name then you can google the botanical name and you can find out in great detail if it is indeed edible or not if it's used for medicinal purposes or not there's some plants you'll even find out can be used to dye things you probably don't really need to know that 
but it'll tell you anyway. Um, there's a huge amount of stuff that... So you've got to realise with hillbillies, like, like my family, we come out here, there's, there's, there's fuck all, you know. Literally about 10, 12 years before we come out here, they were still chasing Aborigines with guns on horseback, literally, in this exact town. In fact, I'm not very far from... Oh, you know, I could take a 20-minute walk and I'd be at a fortified building that was like a a safe house with gun slit stone windows to allow people to shoot out and save themselves from being attacked inside. It, it's old, old school, you know, sort of uh, <laughs> fort type thing. But um, you know, and, and this is this is what they had around here. Uh, but in all of this. You know, we bought different stuff, obviously, from England, one of them being the African box horn that started up as a hedge plant. But we had to make do with what we had. And this was part of what built the British Empire, was just trying to make a go of it to make a product from whatever the hell you've got. Now, they realise there's large grasslands here and stuff like that. Not really large grasslands, but once you clear it, it's going to be good for sheep and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, not much water, so cows weren't as good uh, as sheep would be. And, um, you know, they go on stones everywhere, basalt. So there's stone fences, and I've got videos. There's a video I've got where I've, I'm driving, and I drive for about three miles, and this stone fence does not fucking end. And it's like three miles straight of stone fence. All done by hand, you know, and, and this is what it's all about. You've got to realise that a lot of these hillbillies in the United States face the same thing. They come out of this area, they've done what they could with what they had, and you go, oh, well, it mustn't be much, they're all poor. Yeah, but, you know, like, they're all alive, aren't they? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're not... You know, they, they didn't necessarily have, uh, well, the strange thing is they do have a lot of the coal and a lot of the good shit, but it's it's one of these things. They're the sort of people, not so much, you know, not your white trash trailer park, I'm talking your mountain men, they're the sort of people that you can just <laughs> leave to their own devices with with $20 in their pocket and they can create a home and a bloody life. With, with nothing, with jack shit worth a fuck all but the stuff they've got around them. You know, and this is why some of these people feel pride because you need your blasted... Look at all the shit you've got. Look at how... Look at it. Who built your house? I rebuilt the house I'm in. You know, but... You know, I couldn't have done that without the hardware store, but... Well, in fact, I mainly did out of just stuff that was sitting around here, like all the sheets of plywood. But the big question is, like, <laughs> these people could create something from nothing. It's, it's like if you've ever seen the uh, Apocalypse Now Redux, where they meet up with the Frenchies in the jungle. When we come here as the Vietnamese, they had nothing. We wanted to create something. Create something from nothing. Same mentality, same mentality. You know, those people who built the colonies in the British Empire, such as my great-great-grandparents and stuff like that, you know, they, they were the founders of this country. You know, it's just the way it fucking is. Oh, yeah, they're Aboriginals here. What were they doing, you know? Were they exporting huge amounts of friggin' products? Of course not. You know, they were living, and I'll tell you what, they were living like, like fucking dogs, to be honest, fuck me, you know, they, they're just, it was pitiful, the way they, you know, you know, let's face it, essentially speaking, for the most part, no permanent housing, continuously having to move around from one area to the other as they depleted all the natural resources from one area they moved to the other, it's the Aboriginal way you've got an area, you move around 
you strip the guts, and, and I've heard them say, you know, everyone's always going on about, oh, clean, green, environmental, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, bullshit. Fucking bullshit. The Aboriginals have come into an area, and this is their own words from the people who are still living out in these areas that are just the middle of nowhere because, well, it's where I grew up. They've got a real connection to their land. They don't like the idea of moving. And some of the old people will tell you, we ate everything, absolutely everything. Every animal we could find, we would eat it, and we would eat all of it, the intestines, the whole works. And, uh, and then everybody's going to sit there saying, oh, they're so environmentally friendly. Well, I mean, they just killed off every blasted living thing they could see. <laughs> you know. But anyway, you know, we come over here and uh, and set the country up to what it is today, um, you know, and, and that's just, just the long and short of it. But in, in all of that, it's this ability to improvise and the ability to make something from nothing. And there's a real strong element of improvisation, and there has to be. Because if you can't improvise, if you had to send stuff back from England literally half a world away, guess what? Just the waiting time and the cost of shipping would have fucking wiped us off the map. We wouldn't have existed. We had to improvise, we had to make do with what we had, and we fucking did. You know. Add to that local production of roof sheets and roofing nails, and people done amazing things. And there's, there's stuff around here. Michael even had a, a shed on the old property that he got, you know, taken off him when he went bankrupt. You know, a shed that was not built with actual proper lumber. It was built with just fucking branches cut down off the property, you know? And you're looking at this big, heavy fucking log that's holding up the, the roof, and you're looking at it, it's got a freaking curve in it. You think, shit! Well, that's because they cut it down themselves, you know? You'll find that quite a few hillbillies... And I'm not an expert on it, but I have read how they do it here. Well, we have too much of a heat influx too quickly with a low humidity and it causes cracks. So we've got a method where they soak it in the river during the summer. Um, but you'll find a lot of the old hillbillies, they know how to make... You don't just get a tree and cut it down and it's just fine and that's it. It'll bloody will split if it dries too quickly so they know how to make it dry slower. There's some areas that will dry slower in the colder areas, um, but, you know, other areas that will dry too quickly. Um, so, so in essence, um, what I'm trying to say is they've got every method to do bloody everything to exist. Uh, and, you know, at least the ones in the United States, they don't want to know your business. They don't need to know your business. They really don't give a shit. And you can exist, you know. And if you can make some sort of an income, you can get a little, you know, a little spot on their land. One of the big things I think will be a problem for you if you're being a computer nerd is people skills. Leave behind your city arrogance. Be slow to anger. And realise that you're an outsider. Because trust me, in my town, it takes 20 years before you're even, even considered a member of the town. It really does. You know, all this, oh, oh, we moved here last week and now we're a true blue, you know, it's like that friggin' thing I've seen with it. You know, meet the Germans. Well, this is a, a, the new Germany. So next thing, you know, meet the Germans. They're talking to a black guy. How long have you been here? Oh, yes, I'm full German. I've been here three years. <laughs> No, you're not German. I've been here five generations, for fuck's sake. You know, the same fucking between this town and the town across the other side of the valley. Yeah, five generations. It works out about... Oh, uh, how does it work out? I'm pretty certain it's about 175 years. Yeah, yeah, in one fucking town. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I must admit, I was born on the other side of the country, but, you know, all our relatives and all that, all here, all our farms that we've had, all here, you know, it's just the land I'm sitting on. What I'm standing on right now was bought in 1863, 
we come here and I think it was 1846 or 1847, I can't remember which one, but they had a property that they bought, I don't know, by about 1848 or something. We no longer have that one. The other one that my uncle had that got bankrupted, they had that since 1898. The one my parents got next door, that was bought at the exact same time. This one was bought, so that's 1863 as well. You know. Just keep in mind that you might be talking to someone whose family has been in the area for more than 100 years. You know, and, and you're just some, you know, leave your arrogance behind, be slow to anger, and realise that these people are not really used to outsiders cramping their style and if it's their style and it's their way that this place runs and that's just the way it fucking is don't for five seconds think you're going to change the joint not for five fucking seconds don't think you're going to change the joint because you will not change 175 years of ingrained habits Realise that a lot of these families may be married into each other. That is exactly the case with my family. There's a family that my grandmother was friends with that we kind of still know, but, you know, ain't really necessarily close friends with. They were friends. Our family and their family were friends when they were still in southern England. I'm not joking. And they still both live in the same area. You know, other ones, there's, there's at least two other different families that are common families here that we've married into and they've married up. <laughs> Don't bother calling anyone inbred. But I'm just saying, you know, that these are, these are just part of the facts of some of these places. You know, and if you come in, it, it's paramount to respect the place. And it may not seem quite right that old Mr. What's-His-Name, who's about 75 or 80 years old, who may be losing his marbles, you, you see him walking down the road every now and then, holding a fucking Mossberg 500 pump-action shotgun or whatever. You know, just, just don't worry. Old Mr. What's-His-Name, meandering around again, don't worry about him, you know, don't worry about him. If it doesn't look right to Los Angeles, it don't give a fuck if some old guy's meandering around with a fucking gun. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you hear gunshots, it doesn't matter. I hear gunshots all the time here. doesn't matter. I swear to God, like, w over here, regardless of all the bullshit that these expert conservatives, commentators in the States, and, oh, New Zealand is banning assault rifles. You know, this is the end of freedom in New Zealand. They're banning assault rifles. Are you fucking stupid? New Zealand banned assault rifles donkeys ages ago. In fact, they banned all semi-autos in 1998 at the same time we banned all semi-autos. Why the fuck can't these stupid conservative commentators in the United States fucking go and email someone in New Zealand? Ask one of the New Zealand viewers if it's true. Before spouting all the shit that they talk about CNN not rhyming up their facts, never mind CNN not getting their facts straight. You've got plenty of these fucking conservative commentators sitting there saying that only now is New Zealand banning us. So fuck off. They never had them since the fucking late 90s. They didn't have anything. They didn't even have fucking semi-auto 22s from the, the friggin' late 90s. But, you know, Neither did we from 1998. We've done it, and, and uh, you know, many times New Zealand follows suit, and that's exactly what happened. But I swear to God, I'm hearing stuff here that sounds like semi autos, like really fast firing sometimes. You know, I'm not, I'm not pointing any directions or any fingers at anybody, but you know, there's times there where. My God, I heard one the other day, and I thought it was actually a full auto. But anyway. What you don't know and what you don't see didn't hurt you. So there you go. But anyway, and, and that's another thing. Sometimes <laughs> it's just better to know nothing and shut the fuck up. You know, and really speaking, if you're on the run for some politically correct, do you want to be telling the cops anything? No, no, no it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. None of nobody's business. And of course, why would you be ringing the damn cops if you're trying to stay away from them yourself? Fuck that shit. 
Don't care about automatic gunfire. Don't care about anything. I swear to God, that one I heard, fuck me. Oh, you know, there's pulling the trigger fast on the semi-auto, and I've heard that quite a few times from at least two different directions. And then this other one the other day, holy smoke. It was either two guns that were the same calibre, or it was someone who actually had a full auto. <laughs> this was going a few months back, but anyway. I don't know nothing. So there'll be strange things that happen in these towns that don't make sense. You know, you might find out who the local alcoholic is. And, and you'll realise also, you might find out who the local alcoholic is, or you so you thought, in the first, you know, two or three weeks. And then you found out that that guy, he's not the local alcoholic, he just gets drunk once a month. The real local alcoholic is actually the shopkeeper, and they're really good at hiding the fact they're an alcoholic because they've actually practised walking straight when they're drunk and stuff, you know. You'd be surprised at what can come out of stuff. There's, you know, things that my sister has seen in her town that if you just go on the surface obviousness, you won't know it, but then later on you'll find out that this, this shit's a little bit deeper. There's things that you didn't really know or didn't really, you know, there's just... There's some funny stuff, there's some funny characters, but it's just part of the environment and just, just accept it and move on. And in the end, you'll come to love the joint because you'll identify with the place. And even if the culture war comes over and you're no longer going to face 30 days in the can with Bubba for, you know, calling something with a 5 o'clock shadow or wig and address a he, uh, you know, you might not really want to move back. Because there's a certain relaxed element to it, you know, and there's a certain timeless element to th this. There's just things where things have always been the same and they always stay the same. And, and in effect, it can be bad for some of these towns because it means they don't progress forward. But in the same token, it means that you don't progress forward into this progressive madness of transgender kids convicted pedophile drag queens doing story time with kids saying who wants to be a drag queen when they great you, you missed all that bullshit because this place has stuck 30 years in the past maybe even 50 years in the past and guess what that means you're still back in the good old conservative America where hard work is valued and a lot of things might not be advancing but that also means they aren't advancing to hell in a handbag. They aren't advancing to this clown world fucking madness that you might be trying to escape. You've escaped all that because that doesn't exist inside your town, inside that environment. And if there was a tranny to come through, everybody takes a look at each other and goes, what the fuck is this? And it's not like, oh, well, you know, we accept, you know, they're, they're you know... If you can tell them some of the stories that you've seen back in California or, or, you know, Oregon or Washington State or wherever, you know, they'll just be sitting there going, what the fuck, you know, they'll be shocked, you know, and as much as, you, you know, the, the cell phone coverage is no good, you may value the fact that this place hasn't moved forward because of the fact it hasn't moved into clown world madness. You know, even if the cell phone coverage is fucking shit, and trust me, it is. It is shit. Oh, yes, having said that, because I run, except for a particular free Wi-Fi point or two that is quite a distance from where I am, uh, not, a, not a huge distance, but far enough, um, hmm, thought I heard something like a fucking koala. Uh, sometimes they make like a pig grunting noise. Um, anyway, because of this sort of stuff I've found, at least, I don't know how it is in the United States, I, I had someone try and dox me, I believe, on behalf of someone else. And this someone else, who I believe got their friend to dox me, done the most god-awful shit version of doxing, just a run-of-the-mill standard dox, and... Uh, yeah, they sat there telling me that I live in the capital because I use cell phone systems for data. You know, I basically, you know, I'm, I'm running out of a, a smartphone, basically. Um, 
and uh, you know all that's where my data is coming from. As a result of that, because of the way the system's structured, it appears that I come from Fairfield, Melbourne, or at least when I was with that last carrier I was, uh, and you know they. Link Knight, you live in Fairfield, Melbourne. I'll do it now. You're so fucking sure of that. You know why? Because that's where the main server is for all the cell phone data. That's where the main server is. So when they go to look, and you know, I see these stupid ass dating site ads. We're looking for men in Fairfield, Australia. Oh, are you now? Oh, good. That's good, because I'm not from there. So you become almost... you. I don't know if the American system is set up like this, but I can tell you the Australian system is set up like this. You are exceedingly hard to dox <laughs> because of the way the mobile system has this giant server in the capital about eight miles from the CBD, and uh, everyone's telling me that, uh, every dickhead is telling me that I live there. I can walk outside and show acres of property I'm not in heavily dense populated fucking capital city here. But see it all, you know, so you effectively disappear. I'm not saying the cops couldn't outflank that shit, but let me tell you, you become a lot more harder to identify where you are. You probably know more tricks about that than I do by a long shot, but, you know, I'm just telling you that uh, that's one of the little things I've picked up, at least for this country. Um... But anyway, you know, you can have a, a quite a nice little existence out there. Uh, I will tell you that if you're going to think you're going to grow stuff and this and that, don't just assume your first crop will work. Your first one crop, possibly your first two crops, will just be a fucking disaster. Either by cold, by possibly some disease, by, and a lot of the time, by wild animals, deer eating shit and oh, rabbits eating shit and fucking... A lot of strange things you never expect. I've had troubles with kangaroos as well. You know, I, I put tree guards around trees so the rabbits couldn't eat them. Then the kangaroos come along and they stick their head in the middle of the tree garden and bite the fucking things off anyway. So then I put a top piece of mesh on. Uh, well, then bugs start getting in. So I spray them for the bugs. Oh, then it gets one better. You know what happened? I was watering them in the summer. Everything's dry like it is now, uh, even though we're in autumn. Um, and of course, these little frogs, they're tiny, cute little frogs uh, that we've got quite a few of. The cat gets them occasionally, but then she'll just torture the things because she can never, she never eats them, she just tortures them. Must be too rubbery for her or something. Anyway, get these cute little frogs and... Uh, well, the only wet patch they can find that frogs like to sit in wet patches, the only wet patch they can find is under your trees. So what they do is they burrow under your tree where you've been watering the tree and they break all the fucking tree roots up and the tree has all the roots, you know, it's only a very small tree to begin with, has all the roots broken up at the top and then it kills the fucking tree. The blasted frogs! The frogs! You know, <laughs> turn the frickin' frogs gay! Never mind Alex Jones and, and the, the putting chemicals in the water to turn the frickin' frogs gay! The friggin' frogs were killing me trees! How the hell does a frog kill your friggin' trees? God damn it! Of course, I had some greenie told me that wouldn't be possible. Don't fucking tell me what's happening out here! I know what's happening out here! I can see it! You're living on dreams and whims and good feelings not on the reality of what I'm seeing with my torch in the dark and I know what I'm fucking seeing so <laughs> just be aware that there's sometimes where things can be complete asses, and it's just like fuck me every way you turn there's something else attacking your shit having said that the local mountain men will be able to tell you well you gotta do that otherwise that turns to shit you know there's a couple of people like that in me uh at uh, where my sister lives because she's in an area that gets snow and it's freezing and we're not used to that down here we're actually you know it, it's freezing every single night you know and uh, the long and short of it is that uh, there's certain things they've done and the neighbours said something like oh that's a recipe for disaster stacking firewood against the back of your house you want the firewood away from your house 
in case anything happens, then it, you know, it's not going to friggin', you know, light up in case there's in. You don't want any electrical cables anywhere near your stash of firewood because if you have an electrical fire inside the wall and it, it burns your palings or your weatherboards and then it hits your firewood stash against that wall, you're completely fucked. You'll never save the place. You know, the fire brigade won't save it. It's just, you know... So there's certain things that are, there's certain reasons that you might not understand. Why the hell do they put their firewood away from the house or far away from the stove? Because the heat of the stove can cause the bark to catch fire and burn your fucking house down. Or, you know, electrical things like that. Or there's all these bizarre little reasons, you know. You might be sitting there going, why the fuck are these guys, I can see them from where I am, they spent the whole day turning hay bales over. the fuck are they doing? You these big round hay bales or whatever, and they're rolling the hay bale forward. Well, they're spontaneous combustion because hay bales will light up, especially if they're sitting in the one spot. So they turn them over so the bottom can ventilate more. Therefore, there's a less chance of spontaneous combustion. You all think it's bullshit until you've actually seen this stuff catch on fire. You know, oh, how the fucking sack of grass catch on fire? It fucking does. They can stick temperature probes in and they can show astronomical temperatures happening. You'd be surprised. Compost heaps get exceedingly hot as well, you know. You'd be shocked at what can happen that you never thought happens. You know, compost heaps, they're generally some of the good compost heaps that it's all sterile. You know why? Because it gets so hot in there because of the microbes working that it kills half of the stupid shit like mould. It's just too hot for the mould to survive. But, you know, that's the, the microbe action in there. You know, there's even a way you can use a compost heap to make a hot water system. And uh, you'd be surprised. I've seen it. They're very rare. That hillbilly guy I mentioned, he, you know, in Kentucky, he mentioned it to me, but I already knew about it. And uh, it's, it's remarkable what is out there and what you can do. And between off-grid technologies and mountain men knowledge, you know, I can tell you right now from being off grid, life is eighty to ninety percent the quality that you have living on grid. And yet I can be away from the rest of society for fucking six months and it wouldn't change anything here. It really wouldn't. You know, I might go a little bit stir crazy, but not much would change in six months without I even need to step out the front gate. You know, this is the thing, you know. I don't have a veggie garden, you know. I just, yeah. At the moment, I've got enough on my plate. <laughs> I have had a lot of tomatoes and stuff growing. Sometimes the price of the tomato price here is fucking stupid sometimes. So I've been known to grow my own. One time I had, I, I don't know, I've lost count. It was either 26 or 27 plants. And cherry tomatoes, my gosh, I had just commercial quantities of this stuff, like really seriously commercial quantities of this stuff. And I'll tell you what, just like, when they pick tomatoes in the United States, and it's the same over here, they pick the fucking things green. And uh, I don't know, they always pick them green over here, but it's common in the United States, they all pick green. And... It's just shit, you know? You don't ripen something sitting in a fucking cool room, you know? It's just crap. And if you've ever had, and, and even, oh, well, I get it from the shops and it's vine ripening and it's in the shed. Yeah, but hang on a minute. Went from the farm to the cool room, the, you know, the distribution warehouse to the this, to the that, fucking blah, 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 blah. Fuck me, you know? We was even in cool rooms for a few days at the farm, you know? Have you ever had tomato that you've picked off the plant five minutes ago. Picked it off the plant, give it a quick wash under water, because tomatoes, you, you might know, but tomato plants have a particular stink to them, and that stink will sometimes be on the outside of the tomato. And so you wash the tomato after you picked it, just a quick splash under water, and then you slice it up, and you throw it in with some eggs as you're frying the eggs. And... If you've ever had four or five eggs with a freshly picked and sliced tomato through them, 
You have never tasted tomato so good in your fucking life to the point that you do not know. You never knew that tomatoes could be that good. You seriously never knew that tomatoes could be that good. And uh, these are some of the benefits to, uh, you know, being a little bit more self-sufficient in your life and whatnot. But um, anyway... I think I've rounded on enough there, you know, and uh, <laughs> I think maybe now it's finally time to get on to uh, building the little shack and I'll, I'll have a piece about a wood heater because, uh, you know, it's no big deal getting a solar system and a fan and you may well know how to set up a solar system already, um, but, uh, or you may not, and it's, it's fairly fucking simple. Um, but uh, there's nothing... Uh, quite like having a good wood heater so we'll we'll finally get on to all uh, that hopefully in the next video if I don't think of another thing in between <laughs> that and, and uh, now